Hi everyone and welcome to the Back to Blighty podcast. My name is Becky and I'm joining you today from the south coast of England where I live with my partner, our son and our Springer Spaniel called Molly. I hope you're all doing okay and thank you for coming over and wanting to spend a little bit of time with me today. This is where I talk about all things Diani and fibre and knitting related and a few other things that might take my fancy as well. So I hope you've settled down with your cuppa or your beverage of choice and a nice project and we can sort of get into some nitty goodness and I've got some spinning as well today. So yeah, we're going to use the usual format where we talk about whips, finished objects, acquisitions and a little bit of a life update at the end as well. You will have seen that I've been foraging. Um, I went to the woods and I was looking for things that I could dye with. So I have dyed some yarn with those things and I will be sharing a bit of that with you later as well. So yeah, I think we'll just get on with all the good stuff and um, start with finished objects. So my first finished object is a pair of socks and they're quite bright, but I really love them. So these socks are made with this self-striping yarn by Fab Funky Fibres and I think it's called Drama Club. Um, and they're not matching because they come in 50 gram skeins and I wanted to use up every last bit so I just continued the stripes. I knit 64 stitches um, and then I did an afterthought heel and toe and um, yeah, really like them. The minis I used, I'll show you this one. Um, this toe mini is a Kate Celine mini um, that I had in my stash. And this one here is a mini that came in my advent calendar from the lovely Helen of the Fox in the Purple Coat podcast. So yeah, really love these socks. They're really good fun. And um, who doesn't love a rainbow? perfect. I really do rate Fab Funky Fibres if you want some really good self-striping yarn. I mean the the stripes are just, look at that, beautiful stripes. Yeah, so very very pleased with them and I'm looking forward to wearing them. So that is my only finished object this time but I have been busy and I've been making lots of progress on some other things. So first of all I will show you my sparkling leaf sweater which is living in my knitting bag and case bag, my Highland Koo. So I think the last time I showed you this I was just about halfway through the colour work on the yoke and I have done loads so I have finished the body. So yeah it's looking beautiful. It's blowing out slightly there, but I have finally cast off and uh, really loving this project. That's a better colour. So this is a pattern by, hold on, um, Jill Knight. No, Jill Karina. Sorry, Jill. <laughs> I can't read. The trouble is if I put my glasses on, then all you'll see is light because it is currently half past six in the evening and there is no light outside so I've had to put big lights on and if I put my glasses on then you'll just see white squares so but it does mean that I can't read my own writing. Anyway Jill Carina and I knit this in John Arben's Harvest Hues which I love, absolutely love. Um, so the green is juniper and the brown is barley so yeah it's looking lovely and once this is blocked it's rippled a little bit. The yarn is really bouncy when you knit with it which is gorgeous. It's going to be so lovely. And I don't know if you can see here but the green has got these tearly blues. Oh, it's blowing out light but yeah it's a lot darker than that. It's like that dark um, but they're really really beautiful and I love this yarn. It smells so lovely. So yeah I shall give you a close-up of the yarn as well. So, oh, bear with. So here's the barley and here is the juniper. And that's not a bad representation actually of what they look like. So yeah, the content of the yarn is 65% Falklands Merino and 35% Devon Swart Balls. I never know how you pronounce that. So I'm just gonna say Swart Balls from now on until I'm corrected. I'm sure you're all gonna comment now and tell me how I should be saying it. But yeah, so I've just got to cast on 
get on sleeve island um, and yeah and then I will have this lovely new jumper a couple of changes I did make to the pattern so the pattern called for color work at the bottom a bit like around the neck but I wasn't feeling that I just wanted it to be quite solid so I've kept it just straight green and I will do the same for the sleeves as well on the cuffs and um, the other thing I didn't do was in the pattern she asks you to do a pearl bump so that it looks like you've got a seam down the side and I did that with my Chauncey sweater on the sleeves and to be honest I quite like the fact that there is no seam um, so I didn't do that either so yeah really lovely pattern really enjoyed it I was quite glad to get off the color work though because it's not intuitive um, it's okay once you get going but it's like every row is completely different whereas where you're working normally with a geometric pattern you can kind of figure out where it's going where obviously with the leaves you can't but it is going to be gorgeous love it so yeah really pleased with that so I've done loads on that I've kind of been really trying to get that done because yeah got another acquisition and another jumper that I'm about to start so yeah I've got to get off sleeve island quick There's too many garments too little time so what else have I got to show you I have been working on my second crystal shawl and this is by hold on I'm going to wear my glasses for this Abiona McLaughlin and um, I made one before in brown which you will have seen on my last podcast and I have now cast on a green one so I bought some green Plutulope I can't remember what it was called whether it was green heather I can't remember but it's this beautiful muted green which I really love and it's really heathery as well it's just beautiful so yeah started another crystal shawl and I haven't got long to go actually before I'm on the middle section so this is what it's looking like if I got the right way around I have yeah this is what it is looking like and it's going to be absolutely beautiful I wear my brown one all the time I can't recommend the pattern enough um, the yarn's broken off again because you know plutilope that's what it does but I have got a top tip if you're using it and you find that every time you pull it it kind of comes apart because you kind of forget that it's in a plate if you put it on the floor it kind of comes away better um, from the plate so yeah top tip there so getting on with that done a bit um, you know it's my kind of mindless knit but I have been really getting on with the body of my sweater recently so that's kind of taken my focus but I will get back into this because I just really want the shawl it's lovely so yeah that's going really really well apart from now I've got yarn up my nose again the other thing that I've been working on is a new cast on and this is a bit of an experiment and I did want to cast on another pair of socks but I wanted something to work two at a time because those last socks that I showed you I did work two at a time and I really enjoyed it but I didn't want to make another pair of socks so I decided to cast on some fingerless mitts and this yarn I don't know what just fell out of the bag oh needle anyway um, this yarn is undyed and there's a reason for that. So I am making the A Time to Reap Fingerless Mitts by Melissa Shashwari, I think, maybe, something like that. Um, and I think I've knit a pattern of hers before because the name rings a bell when I try and say it, when I try and pronounce it. Anyway, they're a really lovely pair of fingerless mitts. I will pop a picture up there. Um, and I decided I would knit them in undyed yarn. So I've got to the point where I am going to do the thumbs. So they've got this really lovely, oh, get my ends out of the way, lace detail going on, which is really pretty. It's very, very simple, um, but really, really effective. And then you go, you work down the glove, you do the thumb holes I don't know actually I'm making this up because I haven't read all the way through it but I do know that again this lace repeat is then on the knuckle area now I've done these in undyed yarn because they will be dyed 
but I want to dye them into a fade and I want to dip dye them. Now I've not done that before, um, I don't know why the thought came to me but it did and that's what I'm going to do. So um, watch this space, hopefully next time I podcast I might have actually dyed them that I'm making promises. Now the pattern is quite a loose fit but mine are quite snug and that's how I want them. So this is how they are looking so far. Um, so they're really, really nice, nice and fitted. And so now, yeah, I've just got to increase it for the thumb. But yeah, not sure what color I'm going to dye them at the moment. At the moment, I'm torn. I'm thinking green again, because, you know, green seems to be the thing at the minute. Um, it's the craze, obviously, you know, bit of a trendsetter, not. Um, so, but I'm thinking maybe going green and then going into like a really dark grey or maybe a teal or a duck egg blue going into a really dark grey. And if it doesn't work out, then I will just over dye the whole lot in dark grey. So yeah, that's working well. This is 100% Highland wool, um, not super wash. So it's a little bit toothy, but also I want to see, it's a bit of an experiment, I want to see how well it wears for socks. That's the other reason why I decided to do this. So yeah, bit of an experiment, but I'm enjoying it. Just got the thumbs to do, but that's like increasing and that means thinking, doesn't it? But yeah, I will get on with that. Oh, I've just found the, it was Drama Club. There you go. Fab Funky Fibres Drama Club for the stripy socks. Okay, so that's another whip I've got on the go. Um, I have another finished object slash not even started a project. So I'm gonna share that with you. In my basket here, I have a swatch. And I spoke last time about my jumper of dreams and it is in this book, which is um, the vintage Shetland Project by Susan Crawford and it is a beautiful book. Jack bought me this book for Christmas a couple of years ago and I always thought oh, I really want to knit something out of it but I'm not sure I can do the steaking and I don't know just induced anxiety in me of and, and kind of knocks my confidence because I look at them and I think oh am I going to be able to knit that and I get a lot of really lovely viewers of the podcast sort of saying oh you know you knit all these things and all these jumpers but I still have crisis of confidence every now and then as well so um but I decided you know what life's too short just go with it and if I keep putting off this project it's never going to be made which would be a real shame or I could do it and then have a jumper that I'm going to treasure for a lifetime so I decided on the Yule sweater which is this sweater here and I just love it, especially with the dungarees. It is just beautiful. And I love the colours, I love the pattern, everything about it. And also, the great thing is, is it's unisex. So there's a guy wearing it here as well. So, yeah. So I decided Sunday, last Sunday evening, at about 10 o'clock at night, I'm going to swatch for that jumper. It was like, on a whim, it was like, I just need to swatch with that jumper and I just threw myself into it and by the Monday afternoon after work when I had a few more rows done I had a swatch and here it is and I just absolutely adore this can you imagine in a jumper <gasps> it's just so beautiful and I love the way these reds and browns go into each other. It's just stunning. Now obviously I've got lots of frayed edges because this jumper is knit in the round and therefore you have to swatch in the round. And what I do is that some people don't bother cutting their yarns because obviously you're knitting one row and then you're carrying the yarn around the back and then you're knitting again. So um, yeah you're not going backwards and forwards obviously because you're knitting in the round. And I've seen a lot of people show their swatches and they've still got all these ends, but I really like to cut it and then I like to really block it um, so it can lay really, really flat. Um, and it is just beautiful. And I thought, well, later on when I get to the steaking bit, I can try cutting this yarn and it hopefully will give me a little bit of confidence about cutting the jumper, which still 
scares me just a little bit, not gonna lie. So yeah, so I've done the swatch. I got gauge first time um, with the recommended needles, so I am good to go. But I have to do the rib in 2.25, I mean sock needles basically. Um, this is done in 2.75, so it's gonna be a long project. Um, but the rib is in 2.25 and I was doing the rib on my sparkling leaf sweater and I just couldn't do any rib, <laughs> any more rib. I needed something different. So now that rib's done, I can now think to myself, I'll get on with that. But I'm just gonna show you again, just so you can just see the love. Oh, so happy with that. I'm really, really looking forward to um, getting on with that. Not the rib, but getting on with the color work. Really addictive. So yeah, really, really enjoying that. So spinning. Spinning wise, I have quite a few things to share with you. So, in my basket of tricks, I have four yarns that I have spun up with a project in mind. And whew, this is all John Arben yarn. And uh, yeah, so I have done. Uh, Ivy Leaf, which is in their Devonia top. Again, it's green. I know, that's fine. Um, and the Devonia top has 50% Exmoor Blueface, 30% BFL, and 20% Wensleydale. Okay, so I've got Ivy Leaf. I've also got Sage Sprig. And I have Amber Blaze. Gorgeous colour that is, <gasps> love that. And I then used just 100% Corydale for the white. So these are a completed spin for a project. And I am doing a little knit along with um, some lovely knitty pals, Carol and the lovely Lynn from Callan Yarns podcast. We are doing a knit along with our hands spun. Um, together we're going to be doing the Sneffeld shawl, which I believe means snowfall. And these are my colours for that shawl. In fact, I will pop a picture in here. It is a colour work shawl and it is worked in the round, so it's a little bit different. And then you have to steek it. So, so we kind of thought, well actually, rather than doing that on that jumper first, steeking a shawl doesn't seem half as scary so um so yeah so we're all gonna do it together so these are my colors for my sniffled shawl and i absolutely love them so the orange is going to be for the little plants and then the dark green light green and then the white snow as well so yeah i just think they're going to be beautiful now the shawl is DK weight. Now I am a beginner spinner and DK is, uh, eludes me at present. Um, so this is worsted. So I'm gonna make it in worsted because you know, shawls can never be too big. Um, but I might need some more of the green. But I'm gonna start and see how much I've got um, because the pattern doesn't tell you the meterage of each color. Um, it just tells you kind of what you need per skein. It doesn't tell you um, how many meters. So yeah, so I'm gonna see, but I'm really, really pleased with those colors. I love them. Very green again, very autumnal, um, but it's gonna make the most be beautiful shawl. So yeah, so that's coming on really, really well. The other thing that I spun up was some fiber that I bought from Felview Fibers. Um, and I think they have an Etsy shop and she has a website and she does the most beautiful Rolags. And this was a set of her Rolags. This was Ladies of the Lake. And it is just beautiful. Now with this, I spun it really, really fine. You might have seen a um, little clip on my Instagram stories and I was talking about how I was on target to get DK. And then I gave it a bath and that is not DK. That is a worsted, again. Um, but I love it nevertheless. It was quite hard to spin because 
there's quite a few different fibres in it and with Rolex you're working kind of across the hair, across the grain so to speak, um, so it's not quite as easy to, to draft necessarily. Um, and with the different fibres that made it quite tricky because different fibres you would use a different technique but with these you sort of changed. In fact I've got some more Rolex, I'll show you kind of what I mean in a minute. Um, so these were Suffolk, Merino d'Arles, Corridale and New Zealand Merino. So there were some different fibres in there but I do love it and I'm thinking maybe some mittens out of that because it is just beautiful. So yeah, got quite a lot of meterage with that as well. So in 100 grams, I got 186 meters and that was 10 to 11 wraps per inch, which is a worsted weight. So yeah, love it. Really nice, really squishy and really bouncy. Now, some more spinning that I've been doing is on a new bobbin. So I have an Ashford Kiwi, um, three, I think. Can I have to check that out? think so anyway um, but my friend Julia from the happy knitting podcast she recommended me these 3d printed bobbins and I really like them and on this bobbin I have some spin Jones um, and this is her muddle colorway and it's merino Manx Lawton and Tussa silk I'm not sure if I'm saying that very well again excuse my pronunciations, and it is a rainbow, so it's gonna be a bit of rustling while I show you. So we're gonna take it out of the bag. So yeah, so this is the fiber. I've split it in half so that I can ply it as a two ply. Um, but this is the rainbow. Isn't it just beautiful? So yeah, so I've already done the purple working from this end, purple, the dark red and the pink, and I've just started the gold. So yeah, that's coming on really, really nicely. I'm really enjoying that spin. It's beautiful, and I'm really enjoying the bobbin. Um, you need a different break um, for the bobbin. Um, it's like a polished cotton, and I've used it as well with the wooden bobbins, and I prefer it. So yeah, so that's going really well. I'm enjoying that. I also bought, um, to help me out with my gauge, um, this little gauge from Hilltop Cloud, I think it is, yeah, Hilltop Cloud, and it's got all the wraps per inch and everything on the top, oh. and uh, and obviously you can check your gauge with that, so that's a really useful tool as well, and it's normally hanging from my spinning wheel, so yeah, so let's talk about spinning acquisitions. Apart from my Spin Jones rainbow, I also have some Rolags from Felfew Vibers, which is the one that I was telling you about, this lovely dark brown. And with those Rolags, you can see that they come in these beautiful different colors. And obviously with the brown yarn there, the Ladies of the Lake, each colour was a different fibre, whereas this one is Merino, Corridale, Exmoor, Blue Face and Masham. Um, so, but there doesn't feel like there's such a difference in the fibres, so I shall spin these up and see what they're like, but I mean, just beautiful. Look at those colours. So pretty. So yeah, they always remind me again of Princess Leia. Anyway, Let's not go down that route. So yes, otherwise I have one more acquisition which is for a jumper and it's for a replacement jumper. So my Chauncey sweater, which you will have seen a lot on the podcast, I shrank it a long time ago and it was knit using John Arbor Knit by Numbers. It didn't wear very well, it pilled massively and yeah, I shrunk it. I put it in the washing machine for some reason one day I thought that that would be okay. I've never done anything like that since with my hand knits. Um, so yeah, so I've, actually I have, I did shrink another jumper. Anyway, that's by the by. So I loved the Chauncey, but it got to a point where, although I shrank it, I could still wear it with dungarees, but it got to the point where it actually wasn't very comfortable and it was kind of small, it was a bit short and it didn't, you know, I, I was always kind of you know, shifting it around a bit. So I decided to bite the bullet and throw it away. 
which is what I did, but I want to replace it because I do love that jumper and I love the pattern. So I've purchased some yarn, which is a new to me yarn. It's by The Border Mill and it's North Coast Tweed, which is pure Shetland fingering weight yarn. And I have gone for these colors. So the main color of the Chauncey will be in the blue and obviously the color work will be in the white. And uh, this is the tag. I was really impressed with their shipping because they didn't give any shipping details. They just sort of said we'll ship it. Um, but it literally came within a few days. Now this color, and you're gonna to have to excuse my Scottish here. Um, this is called a scent, a scent. This one is Dornock Firth, I think. So apologies um, to any Scottish viewers for my pronunciation. But yeah, they are just beautiful. So I am really looking forward to doing that. And they smell really good. Really, really good. Yeah, so that's very exciting. So I have two more jumpers um, to start. I'm not sure if I'm gonna carry on with my Fonda. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, I'm not sure it's really me, my kind of aesthetic, if I have an aesthetic. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna leave that on the back burner, but I will use the yarn for something else if I don't make that. So um, yeah, gonna pop my glasses up just in case they're kind of um, bothering you again. I feel like I'm getting flushed. I feel like the heating's come on now and um, yeah, I feel like I'm getting a bit warm under all these lights. So what else? So yes, yeah, so I went foraging and you will have seen that um, I collected a few things. Now, when you're foraging for dye, I always think, you know what? You kind of know some of the things you're looking for, but other times you can just try things and you know, some things give up dye and some things don't. And that's kind of the beauty of it. And also, you're never quite sure what you're gonna get. Now, the ratio generally is that for the amount of yarn you want to dye, you need the same weight in fiber as you do with natural matter to dye. Um, so anyway, so I went and got some dye and, um, well, some plants and things, and um, I came up with these. And so, this is what I've come up with. And I'm really, really pleased with them. And these little sets are going to be available in the shop. There's not many of them, because um, as I said, I have to obviously collect the dye, but I'm gonna share with you what they are. So <clears throat> this one here is a beautiful kind of golden yellow color. This was dyed using tea. So I've been collecting old tea bags, and this is um, tea, Yorkshire tea to be precise, so um, that came out really nicely. This one was Scotch pine cones, which again is really pretty, it's a really buttery colour. I'm hoping you can see these, and they're focusing okay. So yeah, that's that one. This one was wild honeysuckle. And I love this one. It's very, very pale, pale lemony colour. But the lovely thing about it is just there's this odd little specks of pink in there. So that was that one. This one was Madder. It's beautiful, pinky, peachy colour. Do you know, I really wish I could wear peach, but I just can't. But I really love the colour. And this one was also with Madder. Now the difference with these two is that although they used exactly the same amount of dye, exactly the same amount of fibre, this one was dyed just with Madder, nothing else, and this one was dyed with some iron thrown in. So yeah, so I'm really, really pleased with those. And um, yeah, as I said, they will be coming into the shop um, in the next few days. So I shall post on Instagram when they go up. So that's about it for all my nitty and fiber related chatter. 
Um, what else have I been doing? Um, I've been skating. So for those of you who don't know, I go quad skating with my son's girlfriend, who's also my friend. She's wonderful, Thea. And we finally had some reasonable weather where we were able to go out on our roller skates. Not going to lie, felt like Bambi all over again. Um, which you always do when you've been off your wheels for a while. Um, and it was, it was kind of like, oh, everything's kind of fast, there's stones, you know, all that sort of thing. But it was really good fun and it was so nice to get out, have some exercise. And it's a great way to kind of go around the country lanes here where we live. So that was really, really nice. In fact, we do have an Instagram account um, where we kind of, yeah, just kind of make a diary of where we go, what we do, love each other falling over that sort of thing so I'll link that below if anyone's interested or whether you're a skater and you might be interested in that um, so been skating however the weather has now changed and it is horrible again we've had a bit of a stormy kind of period and yeah the skates have gone away again but hopefully soon um, it will be skating in shorts weather which is kind of my favorite time to go skating so been doing that um, I have training next week, so I'm um, embarking on some training through work um, around trauma um, in young people and um, supporting them. So I'm looking forward to uh, learning more about that and using it in my job, which will be great. Um, what else? Oh, I've got my vaccine tomorrow. I've got my COVID jab, which is really strange. So, you know, obviously I'm looking great for 60. Um, <laughs> I'm not 60. Um, but yeah, I had a notification on my phone and I've booked in and I'm having that done tomorrow um, and I'm not quite sure why I'm, I'm not vulnerable I know there's a lot of people waiting um, but you know I've been called and I'm going to go and I think part of it may be because I do a lot for my dad and my dad was quite poorly um, a few years ago and had to have two brain surgeries and um, so I was kind of classed as his kind of go-to person and his carer if you like so I don't know whether that has something to do with it but anyway I have my jab tomorrow so I'm hoping I'm going to get away with maybe just being a bit tired um, I don't like the thought of going and having a, a vaccine and knowing you might be ill but um, but hopefully I'll just be a bit tired and I can sit down and just knit all weekend which would be great so I've got that tomorrow um, so that's um, something different um, yeah and otherwise still working from home at the moment we are looking to return into schools at Easter although we are going in if it's deemed critical or essential so at the moment I'm still at home um, but you know that could change um, I've also been sent a lot of tests um, because I'll have to test myself and um, before I go into schools and things like that so yeah, so work's busy, it's getting busier, you know, people's mental health, again, is um, quite fragile at the moment, so it keeps me very busy in my day job. Otherwise, we are all fine, I've been getting into the garden, which is really lovely, and um, and also, you know, going into the woods is really nice this time of year, because things are starting to bloom, and it's kind of a fresh start, it feels, so um, I think we all need that at the moment. Anyway. I am very aware that I am rambling and wittering on. So thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to keep updated with when my podcasts go live. And, um, well, not live, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make out that I know what I'm talking about. But, you know, you'll be notified when a new episode goes up. And, um, and please leave a comment, you know, tell me what you're working on or, you know, have you been out foraging for different things? I'd be really interested to know. So thanks again for spending some time with me and I will catch up with you very soon.